Hi, I'm Dr. Jake Kaler with Pain Specialists of America. Today we're going to be talking about the lumbar spine anatomy. It's really important to understand how the bones and the nerves of the lumbar spine interact so that we can understand our targeted therapies. So I'm going to give you a brief anatomy tour because it's important that we teach our patients every day. Here we have the front of the spine. This is the back of the spine. This is normally where I make my little political joke and say, unless you're the other guy, in which case you're this way. However, I get too many complaints from my office manager, so this is the front of the spine for everyone. Front of the spine, we have the vertebral bodies. These are the big Greek columns that hold everything up. They're really important for uh, holding up the compressive weight of the spine. In between, we have the discs. These are made of a fibrous material, and they're kind of the shock absorbers of the spine. The front, or anterior aspect of the spine, is important for bearing the compressive load, as I said. It holds up about 85% of the weight of the spine. The front of the spine moves a little bit, but not too much. The back of the spine, in the back of the spine, we have the spinous processes and the transverse processes. These are, muscle, these are muscle and ligamentous attachment points to allow us to bend and twist and turn. In between, we have the facet joints. These are normal joints, just like hips, knees, those sort of things that have fluid, they have a synovium, they can cause pain. The back of the spine is really important for rotational stability. As we bend and twist and turn, this is what allows us to do this, but it can also cause pain. In between the front and the back of the spine, we have the nerves coming out at each level, okay? If the nerve is pinched as it's coming out, it generally causes that one-sided sciatica type pain. If it's pinched as it's coming out, it's generally called foraminal stenosis, and that's because the nerve is coming out of the foramen. If it's pinched from the front, it's generally a disc that's pushing back on the nerve. If it's pinched from the back, it's generally facet arthritis, or from that little joint that we were talking about that's pushing forward on the nerve. If it's pinched from above and below, that's generally due to degenerative disc disease or other type of osteophyte formation that pinches down on the nerve from above and below. You can imagine that as the discs move down or compress, it's gonna pinch that little nerve root from above and below. If you have central canal stenosis or where the spinal cord is, you tend to have symptoms on both sides. Now that can be nerve pain like sciatica, or it can be more of a symptom of neurogenic claudication. And what that means is generally either a burning in the calves or it can be cramping, generalized weakness, or loss of reflexes. We see both of these phenotypes. If you have pinching in the central canal, we call that central canal stenosis. It's important to be able to know the anatomy of the spine so that we know what we're doing with regard to our interventions. We also want to know the pathology that each of our patients has prior to doing the physical examination so we can pay particular importance or particular attention to each one of those areas. On top of this, it's always important to remember that while these are the bones and the nerves of the spine, we also have muscles, ligaments, tendons, fascia, other things that contribute, other things that can cause pain. And we need to peel these layers of pain away so we can make an appropriate diagnosis and offer the, the, the appropriate therapy.